episode 57 of the Spare Change Challenge being streamed here on Twitch and also being shown on YouTube. So thank you for joining us, whichever format you happen to be watching me on. Um, let's go ahead and pull some tables up. I literally just sat down. So we'll see if we can get some games going. Hopefully the games are good. If the lag would allow me to get a table, it would be nice. Alright, we got two. Let's go for tree. Eh, I think we'll hold out for something better. It's Saturday, so I'm having some coffee today. Splurge a little bit. We have a 50 and L table here on the top left. And 25 and L on the top right. I'm going to try to add to that. Here's a 50 and L. Try the seat. So we have two 50s. Let's do this. Yeah, 35%. That's good enough. Good enough to take a peek at it. Got a lot of money on this table. It's good. Um, this can be a vacuum shove sometimes. I think I'd rather just defend though. I don't know. Probably should err on the side of shoving there in my first hand. Meh, I don't know. I think ace eight suited is a definite shove. Ace nine for sure. It's close. I think flatting is fine too. So doesn't really matter that much. I do like to build the aggressive image early. However, it looks like this guy might be on every hand razor, so I sure do wish I had shoved <laughs> at this point. Same hand. Hmm. Okay, hopefully this guy doesn't do a reverse exploit on me. Well, we got one taker so far. How about an all spade flush? Be a good way to start. Instead we get this tricky deaky little flop here. Check back in a well. I don't know about this one. <sighs> I think a small bet is okay. Yeah, it just I mean it just makes the hand play a lot easier. I mean anybody that leads the turn there is basically gonna make us commit. So I like just betting. The pot's a little bit too big. Otherwise. So we got a fish here. Hopefully he doesn't have an ace king or two or deuce. <laughs> And we just win this one. I'm going to continue being in bankroll knit here. Frogs. That's the name of the table. In case you're wondering why I just said frogs. <laughs> Certainly opening 9-10 suited. Not checking the slow play, checking to get the money in now while we have definitely the best hand and we can get called off and make people commit with worse. 
I mean, this hand's over, I guess. If he's checking back, he's probably not doing anything on the turn. It's a really, really good card. Um, because if he has... A jack, a jack probably would have bet the flop. Um, I don't think he's calling any bet, though, with an 8. So I think I'd rather just get value from a jack. The times he has a jack, and the rest of the time... I mean, he's just folding anyway, so... It's one of those where either you get six dollars or you get two dollars you get three dollars whatever right it's whatever you bet is what you're gonna get when you get called um, not it's not like I'm gonna bet I guess I could amend bet then maybe he raises with a jack anyway I don't know maybe that's slightly better I think it just plays simpler just to shove maybe he somehow has a queen and just heroes I don't know be kind of crazy wouldn't it Guy's probably going to be playing a lot of pots. We're going to be out of position. The queen seven suit is still strong enough here. This guy going to three bet again? Make it two out of three? Probably leaving this table anyway. Especially if I got this guy and this guy to my left here. And it's playing damn slow, too. Doesn't help things. I mean, this is a really draw-heavy flop. I just think we have to bet, though, in position. There's just a ton of hands. I mean, not a ton, but there's plenty of hands. There's enough hands that he's folding that it makes it okay. We can get him off some king highs. Pairs, small pairs. So it's a worthwhile bet. What it probably would be just a one and done situation unless we improved significantly. This guy's raising 100%, huh? Well, that's over two hands. My four X's. I think I still have to defend the Jack 8 suited here. We flop open it. I'm just going to put the money in. Um, I'm just going to commit. If I bet small, I mean, he might be willing to, like, shove king-queen or ace-high or something, so I have to bet big there. I mean, I do just want to win the pot right now, right? We're only open-ended with the backdoor flush draw. If I had a boat there, I'd obviously want to bet smaller, right? Give him some room, give him some rope. That type of thing. Wow, we are just freaking smashing every board. Can we get some value out of these hands? Not the best card in the world. Well, I, don't know. I mean, if he has queen nine here, we're just kind of screwed, right? Um, I think we're getting value out of a 10 on the river anyway. So I think we can just check this back. And just decide based on his bet sizing what we're going to do. He may be thinking about just betting a 10 here. Are we going to get value from Morris when we raise? I mean, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. Kind of confused. Yeah, I doubt he's going to call when we shove there, but I don't know. It was an interesting spot, though. Um, I mean,. I think we bet the turn he calls and then probably folds the river, so I don't know, maybe that was definitely a shove there, I don't know. Yeah, that was definitely a shove, I think, regardless of whether we're going to get value or not. I mean, just in case he has a worse jack, I think we have to shove, right? I think he raises the flop with that hand, though, honestly. 
Yeah, I think we, I don't know why I checked that back. It's pretty bad, I think. Pretty, pretty bad. I don't know what I'm thinking. So yeah, that was a huge error. Like, why am I such a nit today? I don't know. Damn, another good flop for us. I think we just bet standard here and then decide. This one is not a good seat. Well, maybe not too bad. Now we've already set out though. I guess we leave. Seems to be plenty of games, so we'll keep rotating them in. Standard here. Oh, geez. Gosh darn. I guess that works. I mean, we bet. I mean, I guess we basically thirded it, so. I mean, that was supposed to be a ship pre flop. Okay, yeah, this worked out. Worked out. I mean, we got five, six to put more money in. Ooh. I don't know. Hmm. It, was an accident. it was a happy accident, wasn't it? I mean, of course, he flopped a shit ton of equity, didn't he? Was he open ended, too? I think he was. He may have been ahead on that flop. Well, and I, th I don't think he was because a nine gave us a straight two. So that's pretty funny though that he could f put in a third of my effective of the effective stack and get that flop. Yeah. Actually, you know what? With a ninety ten, I probably actually did a pretty damn optimal three bet size there. I, I wasn't thinking straight. I mean, I didn't. I didn't take all factors into account. I don't know what my problem is today? I'm definitely not playing my A game. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's like I'm a little distracted, I guess. Maybe we're because we're getting a late start. I don't know. Got other things on my mind, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't be playing. I think we were on this table. I don't know. What do you think? Should we just play some sit and goes? Since I'm, maybe it'll help me focus. Maybe just play about three or four sit and goes. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. What do you guys think? I mean, there's certainly plus EV. Hmm. I think we have to just, well, I don't know. There's a lot of hands that connect with this board. I think we just give up. If it was high, low, low, we would bet, I think, more often than... There's there's a lot of rivers we can just fire here. Um, we're waiting for big blind here, so we'll go ahead and leave that one. I'm going to play sit and goes. I am... I think I am... My game is matured enough that I can recognize when I should not be playing. I mean, I've I just made some obvious, at least two obvious errors. I mean, just obvious errors, where I didn't either consider enough information like I normally would, or I just did something completely ridiculous, like that river. I didn't shove that river. What, what the hell am I thinking? I mean, only one hand, really one realistic hand beating me. And even that, I don't know, would it queen, I guess queen nine would call the shove, but... But he probably would take a different line than he took with queen nine. Yeah, I kind of can discount that. So if we're beat, it's by like a boat, a better, I just jack ten by some miracle or a flop set that made a boat tens or turn set, you know, that made a boat. I mean, and that's just a cooler. You can't freaking take coolers into account when you're deciding to get value. So I'm really pissed at myself because he had a hand. It could have potentially hero called that river if I'd shoved. I mean, I think maybe we get calls a, 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 across a wide spectrum of opponents. We're probably going to get called 20-25% there. So how much value did we just lose by not doing that? Like That basically cost us at least three or four bucks, I think, long term. It's pretty insane that I, that I made such a bad play. Well, I guess I won't beat myself up too bad. But yeah, it's pretty annoying. Here's the trying to get the tournament up. 
play the five dollar heads up turbos. I like those. Oh, I already got a game. That was quick. That was very quick. Normally it's not that quick. Everybody knows what my early game scratch strategy is in these. is just bet a lot, raise a lot, stab a lot, poke and prod him. That's usually the goal. But otherwise, play pretty straightforward. But basically, just play a really an annoying aggro game. What do you think? Could he be trapping with an ace here? Get this thing over with? I like to build a fishy image too, and that kind of builds a fishy image for me. In case he happens to be a reg, that's going to be very difficult for him not to label me as a fish. Do we just get it in here? I'm certainly going to value bet. Don't mind getting it in. I'm going to do kind of a, kind of, well I was going to do a little advanced play here. Um, I'm actually going to call this and raise a lot of rivers. I guess that's not one we're going to bet, though. Wow, couldn't he have just raised the flop? We're basically free rolling there. To, for the win, I mean, there, he has like no chance to win. He's down, do I just ship here? Uh, we're probably a little bit too deep to do that yet. I'm not, gonna th I'm not a big fan of three betting out of position anyway. That often in these. I definitely prefer to play post flop rather than three bet because I think what three betters are a lot of time people are light three betters just because not that this is light but people three bet this huge light range just because they're not very good post flop a lot I think at least it seems that way at least I think they're missing some value and I mean there sure is there's something to be said for just having just winning money now when they fold but I'm, I'm more of a small ball mentality type player I like to just Play some post-flop pots. Make people make big errors. Cooler people, you know, that type of thing. Um, this could be a good spot to check raise. I'm not going to do it, though. I have a sizable chip lead. I'm going to play the tournament odds here. I mean, I've kind of been an aggro bastard so far anyway. And he may be tired of that. and just ship it with kings there or something. Um, we're gonna fold to this. This is the first time he's three bet. We'll give him credit. He's playing 100% VPIP. We're just gonna assume he is a fish and play accordingly. Um, I think we just have to protect our hand here. Pretty much shutting down. I think if we get raised or called. So we're losing a few small pots here, but that's fine. It's kind of in our plan, right? Is we're we're okay with losing a few small pots here and there. I think we can take a little bit of, if he doesn't donk bet again, he's been doing this a lot. Last time he did this, he had bottom pair and an open ender. I think I'm just going to give him credit. I have a feeling he's just leading when he has something. So we're going to try and weather this little storm here of him picking up hands or whatever. Um, we're certainly defending. He's playing just about every pot. I think this is a good spot to check raise. Um, I think he's c-betting like 100%. So. Okay, so we probably have the best hand now, honestly. He's only going to have a lot of ace high, so I'm going to bet small. And I think he's going to have a lot of draws that missed. I don't think he's going to bet a nine. He, he'll probably bet an eight, and then his jack tens is six sevens, those type of hands. Um, so I think we could just check it down here. And he actually has a nine. That's really weird. I don't know why he wouldn't bet that river. Um, okay. I mean, we ran the top of his range. Um, we're definitely value betting this. I think he can raise with worse on this board. So we're going to click back. And if he raises again, I guess we just fold. That's kind of a bad card. Complete some hands in his range. I mean, I, I, I figure there's lots of six, sevens. I mean, he could be doing this with two pair. This could be a block bet with two pair. I think we just raise. Are we going to get him off anything? I think it's worth worth a raise here. Just in case there's anything he can fold that's beating us, which I think there is a lot that can fold that's beating us. 
I mean, he should be folding any pair here, right? And he should be folding a nine. He should be folding eight. He could even fold eight five or something. I mean, this is, I just think he's gonna just be afraid of that seven, and I think our sizing is about right there for that. So, um, so the I guess when the blinds go up, I've got to set another scene switcher up. So bear with me while I do that. I keep forgetting that every time it switches to a new blind level, I have to make a new scene switcher. It's kind of annoying. What that basically means is my screen's getting small. You notice that, so I can stop that by doing. Oops, eh, ate the wrong thing. Damn it, sorry about that. So this is this one. I think we have to delete it. And then we'll do this, and yeah, that, and then this. There we go. All right. <laughs> yes, he can be taught. That way it stays consistent. It's a big screen for you guys at all times. Three betting. This is second three bet out of nine. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play pretty honest here. I mean, I would like to play in position, but I'm not gonna play. Hand doesn't flop very well. I'd much rather just call with nine ten there than freaking a six. It's just so many reverse implied odds issues as well. Um, I'm just gonna float one street, and then if he checks back the turn, I'm gonna fire the river. I think he does have some ace highs in his range, however. So that's a pretty bad turn card. Um, I don't think he's going to fold an ace high straight to my raise on the river. I was looking for something other than a freaking four. I was looking like a board pair, anything higher than a, a four. You know? This guy's basically playing 100% of hands. Maybe I should tighten up here. I mean, he leads, seems to lead when he has something, so I think we just take this down most of the time. Um, I think that's kind of maybe his MO is when he has something he leads when he doesn't have anything he checks folds unless he's like got a monster and then he might check raise or something been very razy on this type of situation but I mean I can use that against him too you know when I have like two pair I can just lead and he'll raise and then I just jam right or call and let him bluff the turn I'm going to tighten up a little bit here. If he's defending 100%, I need to tighten up and have hands that flop better. Um, I think that's just a standard adjustment. Um, I'm actually going to mend bet again because I think I can just continue to erase here. And of course, we don't we don't have 100% read. He could just be picking up massive amounts of good hands. Uh, I think we check this back and raise a lot of turns. I want to give him a chance to bluff. And we do pick up some equity, so it's a good spot to do it. And we could have the best hand here, too. And this could be for value. He could definitely continue with worse. Um, I think I'll take my showdown value if he just checks here. Oh, yeah, we see we got worse to call the turn. He's got a 90% range, 100% range, basically. Um, we're not going to defend this. We will defend wide. However, he's only stealing 30%. He's limping a lot of buttons, so we don't have as much pressure, of course. We discussed this before. I will be raising a lot of suited cards, though. Um, see, this is a good spot. Um, I'm actually going to min bet here, just because he's been raising on these type of boards a lot. Um, <laughs> the way I run, he's probably got kings, king deuce. So he's seeing, trying to see just about every flop. We have a gut shot here. I think that's a good spot to lead. He'll raise, of course, now that I can't continue. I mean, if we hit a deuce, I mean, we're getting a pretty good riot price. I think we could maybe get some more money if he has an ace hand. We don't really have a big problem with the reverse implied odds here. So I think just calling this min raise is fine. Just trying to mine a deuce or a jack. I mean, whatever, right? You know, somebody min raises, you got a chance to to get a lot more money in the pot with a better hand. I think you just take it heads up. Um, I mean, if he had bet raised any more than that, I just fold. Then I don't mind investing another thirty. It's 
it's worth it to me. So we flopped the nuts here. I'm gonna I'm been betting small, so I think I'm gonna bet a little bigger here. It's a very draw heavy board, and I think he's gonna be able to continue a lot of the time. Ouch. So hard to flop that good. So hard to flop that good. I guess he could be a little bluffy, so maybe I could take a chance and check a hand like that back. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. In position for sure. I don't know. We certainly have the best hand here almost always. He will lead if he has an A, I think. Um, so we're going to check back and give him some rope. Kind of our same plan as earlier that we had with the nuts. Um, I mean, if he's doing some kind of extreme slow play here, more power to him. So he has the A7. We have 33 big blinds. We'll just play a flop. I'm just going to do my min raise. Um, I'm just going to rep nothing. Hopefully he has a king here. Because I think it's hard for us to have an ace. Right? And I think he's going to bet a king again on the river. So we can go for a check raise on the river. Um, did we just shove? We got him. We got him. It worked out. He's accepted a rematch, and we will definitely take that rematch. We will play this guy all day long. Where the hell did it go? That's kind of weird how it does that. Kind of erases our HUD. That sucks. But we know what he is. I mean, we, we don't even need a HUD, in fact. Right? We know, we know this guy's MO. Sees ever just about every flop. Plays kind of just kind of leads when he has something, and just kind of check check foldy when he doesn't. Um, he's just kind of kind of stabby when he has weak hands. I think, like I just said, and he definitely. I, I think he's just kind of. It's hard to explain this type of player. I think I know exactly who this type of player is because I've played against him a lot in like pub poker games, honestly. He's kind of like your typical pub poker guy that just maybe under thinks he knows poker. Um, I, I, I mean, I can't really explain. It's hard to explain otherwise. I guess we'll just be situationally specific here. I think I hope he's one of these guys that's just kind of a hothead that will um, will get frustrated and just dump a whole bunch of money to us. Like we could just play him for like the next 45 minutes. And I'm gonna limp the button with a seven. I haven't been doing that much. Um, I think it works good. And we'll just bet. I think he leads with anything, right? Just leads when he has something. Unless he has a monster, then he'll check raise. Um, he probably could have some weak flush draws here, or maybe even like queen nine or something like that. So we have to bet again to protect our hand. Just gonna check fold this. He hasn't three bet in a while. Wow, it would be a good time, right? Um, I don't know. He only three bet twice the whole tournament, but I think jacks are just too strong. If if it's a cooler, it's a cooler. We just have to get it in. Jacks is way too strong. Heads up. Okay, can we hold? Uh oh, deuce. Oh, phew. I'm not happy about it, but at least it's a chop, right? At least it's not the nine that gives him the straight. So we know he's willing to commit now with a hand as weak as ace-10, so that's good information. We have a couple overs and a backdoor flush draw. I like the lead here. I'm actually going to call here because there's a turn, ton of good turn cards for us. It's not one of them. It's not one of them. So we'll just check fold now. It's a pretty, that's a pretty wild run out, isn't it? But it's better than him smacking an ace or a straight. It's pretty crazy that the board can straighten out like that. Um, we know he 
three bets and gets it in with ace-10, but I think fives, I think this is just a little bit too weak. Um, I don't really want to play the game where I'm just flipping with this guy. I mean, I, I know I can just outplay this guy, so we're just going to call and then proceed accordingly and keep the pot fairly small here. We're going to float one street here. Um, I think we have to protect. I think he's just got like, he's either got kings, fours, deuces, aces, or like um, um, nothing that he's probably just going to fold. So I think he raises when he has it, and he folds when he doesn't. I mean, I think this guy's just pretty damn straightforward. I think he had like ace jack there or something, honestly. So we don't want to flip against that. We didn't give him five cards to beat us, right? This is the good hand of 3-bet. If this was the right type of player, I would be 3-betting a, a range like the 10-3 suited. But like I said earlier, I like to play, play post-flop. Even out of position, I think it's fine. Um, we're going to fold to this. This hand doesn't flop very well. He's 3-betting a lot. Um, that's, a good, that's a good sign. Either he's picking up hands, which is a possibility. Or he's maybe a little tilty. I don't know. Um... I think this is a great spot to check shove. He could call it off with diamond draws, any king, um, all kinds of stuff. Just make a frustration call here, and I'm hoping he does. Just have king jack, please. Okay, that sucks. But I don't think he's going to put much more money in the pot after that. I, I think that I think it's best just to try and let him get it in. He, he's willing to get it in light. We already know that. So let's just play accordingly. He's three betting a lot this time. I'm not necessarily going to stop opening wide, though, because I, I want to keep the aggressive image up, right? I'm just going to lead with my potential best hand here. Um, not the worst turn card to continue on. Um, I think we just check fold now. He could definitely just have a spade draw, though, couldn't he? I don't think it's worthwhile to call. I mean, he could definitely have something like... I don't even know. I mean, he's definitely polarized here. I mean, we know he's playing a wide range, so there's so much of his range that doesn't connect with his board. If we really want to put this guy in tilt, we call this. But this looks like such a value sizing here. I almost would rather call a pot size bet here. You know? 150 just looks way too value-y. Value-y, is that a word? He's still 3-betting a lot. I mean, he's just opened up on us. This is 5 out of 7 3-bets. So, I mean, I guess we need to tighten up slightly. I mean, obviously 6-5 suit is still going to be in our tightened range. But it's not the worst thing in the world that he's 3-betting a lot. I mean, we're just going to get paid off when we have it. Um, definitely, definitely calling this. There's so many good cards for us. A spade, a, f <clears throat> a 4 would be like the primo card. Um, but whatever. Yeah, we just don't get a good card on the turn. So we're going to check fold again. He only bets 120. We're getting a really good price. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Um, he's three betting a lot, so I'm going to try lumping the king three suited here. I definitely don't want to play it on a bloated pot. We're just going to pot it because we almost always have the best hand here. Really? A call? Alarm bells? Hello? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to continue. Um... I think we're short enough now we can just ship um, a pair. If he's trapping, he's freaking trapping. I think he's not. I'm thinking, I don't think he's trappy though. I think he's just raising when he has a strong hand. I'm folding six deuce. We're going to continue with that tighter range we talked about. Uh, yeah, I'll call the king five suited. C betting every time, right? I mean, do we really want to float a guy on this board um, that may be kind of still tilting a little bit? I don't know why he would be a tilting, but 
I just seem to get that vibe off of him right now. I'm going to limp the hit King 7 suited too. All right. We're not going to we're not going to get crazy here. Um This is a niche, not a pick. We're going to continue calling. Um wow, what a great river. Um it's so awesome. Such a great river. Please have the ace of spades. Please have the ace of spades. I'm going to try and go for max value here. We have such a disguised hand here. There's no way he's folding the jack, queen, ace of spades here, right? No way he's folding that. I guess he doesn't have the ace of spades. Oh, that sucks. Maybe I could have been smaller. I don't know. Maybe I should have been a smaller, but I think he even calls, like, leaving, if I left, like, 200 behind, maybe he folds. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I got a little greedy there because what am I trying to get value from one particular hand exactly? I mean, how often is he just going to have the ace of spades? Um, I think we have to peel. He's three betting so often, we just have to peel. I'm going to check back, try to get the show down here. I'm disguised to strengthen my hand. I'm just going to call. Wow. Can we get any worse runouts? I guess we can fold now. Kind of sucks. Maybe I should have bet the flop. Protected my hand. Remember what we talked about earlier is he's just kind of check folding when he doesn't have anything. I was kind of trying to get him to bluff at some point, but we kind of power owned ourselves there, didn't we? We probably have the best hand. I'm just going to leave. Try to protect it. Play's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. These blinds are up. Um, I don't know if we can three bet and just get, I mean, just get this in. I'm going to just bet pretty big here. Um, we're about to be in shove fold mode. If he, if he attacks us here or calls, we're just basically going to be in shove fold mode. Anyway, so I think it's worth going after the money. Um, I'm not going to bluff this guy. Wow. <laughs> can we run any better? Holy cow, that's so awesome. Um, I think we get some value from a jack. Um, but we're not going to get a whole lot. Um, but 200 he'll call. For sure. Maybe he could even check raise with Queen Jack here. That sucks. What did he have here? Just a hard draw, a 5, 3. Probably just a 5 or a 3. Ace King's a good hand. I would rather have that on the button right now. Maybe we could even third that? I don't know. Mm, I don't really want to. I want to see a flop with this. I don't really want to get blown off my hand. I'm gonna check back and and min raise if it turns. I don't know. Is he playing pretty straightforward all of a sudden? I don't know. We're just going to protect. It's kind of hard for him to raise us, right? I think he could have a deuce. Remember, he's done this with a deuce be with a bottom pair before. Okay. In your hand, sir. Your pot. I don't think he bluff raises, honestly. I don't think he's the type of player that bluff raises. I think he bluffed three bets, but I don't think he bluff raises after the flop. I think he just plays pretty straightforward. I'm not trying to get this in. Do I want to just try and win with fold equity here? Um, I think I have to have. I can continue to raise. Sucks if he shoves, but I think we have to still see bet. Um, I, I he goes multiple streets with with a ten or a deuce here, so I don't think betting the turn. Of course, he leads this. Ah, oh, I kind of want to raise this, but I don't have much room. I guess I just call. Yeah kind of sucks. There's not really much we can do when he leads the turn. I mean, we we didn't have that strong of a hand, really. And I don't trust having... On that board, I just think he's going to have a weak ace a lot, or a 10. He may be frustrated enough not to... I mean, we may be short enough for him just to gamble. Right? Um, we're going to do this because I hope he 3-bets. He's been 3-betting a lot. We haven't raised in a while. Maybe we just get it in here. 
Please don't have me beat. <laughs> Please don't have me beat. Oh, come on, 10. 10 or 5. Okay. <laughs> we'll take the win. We'll take the win. God, he's, he's 3 bet 55% this, this session, this tournament here. 55 freaking percent. And he has Ace King. That's just so sick. We're going to get it in here with the threes. Can we win two in a row? Can we win two in a row? Can we do it? Yes, we can. Please accept another one. Let's play again. Yes. I love playing this guy. It's nice to win a couple in a row. <laughs> He's going to really be on tilt now, right? Damn, why does it force you to hit take my seat? That's so sick that it makes me do that. So gross. So what do we do? How do we adjust in this tournament? Um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up. Play a tighter range. He three bet us a lot last term. I think I'm going to adjust this one by tightening up quite a bit on the button. Um, we're going to do some limping. We're going to maybe polarize our opening range. We're either going to be folding, or we're going to be opening and getting it in, or we're going to be limping everything else in the middle, right? Welcome to the stream, for those that just joined. Interesting turn card. Could he have could he have a hand that's beating us right now? I think we have to check back and let him hit a straight or a flush or something, right? I mean it's kind of risky. Uh, but that is like the beautiful river card. Um, I'm not sure we can just get it in here though, honestly. I think we could just go for a value bet and try to get value from I think we can kind of over bet because I think he calls with flushes and straights. Even if we bet two ten here. So we, I think this is a good spot to overbet. That's going to really tilt him too. So we got a little early lead here. We're going to consolidate that. We're not going to fall in his trap and just let him three bet us every hand. We're going to play with that strategy that we already talked about. And hopefully he's not watching this. I would doubt it. I would doubt he's watching this. Um, like I said, I'm going to limp hands that I can't continue to a three bet that I want to see flops with. Um, keep pots small. That type of thing. Um, I like a min race here. I think it's going to just put a lot of pressure on him. Um, and we can like take our showdown value to showdown. Wow. Okay. So he has jacks. It's okay. Good thing a jack didn't come. Wouldn't we have had a straight? We have two overs and a gut shot. Just going to lead. And certainly call this. And probably call the turn often as well. Because a jack or a 10 is probably good here. Um, probably, I don't know. Oh, I wasn't, I didn't even realize that was 4 to a straight on the board. Damn it. Ah. I would have, I would have potted it there. I maybe potted it. I don't know. No. Well. Maybe not pot. I don't know. I have to think about it. I have to see the board again. Um, that was definitely, I think, a good spot to lead the river. I can't just check down once I hit a gut shot. He's not. There's nothing he's going to bet there. It's four to a straight. I didn't see. If it's not four to a straight, I think he bets again. God, but he's just going to check back all of his everything, just two pairs and everything. But he'll call with those hands if I lead. God, I just gotta. This is why I'm not playing cash games right now, because <laughs> of that kind of shady crap. That I just did. Um, when he's raised or three bet, and we've gone to showdown. He's kind of just had it this um, since we've been playing. So I'm not so sure that his 60% three bet or whatever last tournament was legit 60%. Maybe he was just freaking um, picking up monsters. I'm still gonna stick with the same strategies because I think it's fine, even if he's not the type of player we think he is. Even if the read's slightly off, it still works against any player. It's a safe. It's a safe strategy. He's just not that foldy pre-flop. Anyway, it's not like we have a whole bunch of... I'm just going to call one street here. Um, it's not like we have a whole bunch of... I think we just bet bet here, right? Not the best river card. Ah, I just don't think we can get him off anything here. 
He's going to call me with a 7-3 or deuce here every time. Um, I don't. I think like anything higher than a 10, I would have bet the river again. Of course, a lot of those hands I would have been betting for value. Um, I think just check. Out of position is kind of tough. I think we just check call, though. We're certainly check calling again. Um, definitely check calling because he'll rep this king often. Welcome to those again who just joined. We played cash for a few minutes, but then I basically did a executive decision and decided I was not thinking optimally. So we switched to heads up, sit and goes, and we've won two straight so far against this guy. We have a gut shot here and a backdoor flush draw, so we have to continue. And we're going to snap continue too. Hmm. Yeah. I wish we could get the showdown in one of these spots where he's just pounding. Why is he three xing it? That's so weird. Wasn't he min raising most of this time? I think we have to check call. I mean, this guy might be suboptimal just because I think he might be barreling light here sometimes. That's a really a terrible card for him to barrel. I mean, I guess maybe he just has it. I. I don't know. I don't take this guy just doesn't strike me as the as super aggro post slob guy. I'm gonna put it in just because of what we know. I mean, if he has this beat again, that would be so sick. He's three betting so much when we raise, but this is the benefit of polarizing the three bet range. He doesn't realize we've done that. To us, in his mind, he just may see we're playing a lot of pots and may just snap us off with something here. He's, we're 57 7. <laughs> we're such a freaking fish. 57 7. Um, definitely continuing on that card. How can we be 57 7? Oh, wow. I may. That's a good card to lead with. See, this is what I wanted to see. See, he raised us on the turn. Is he doing it light, or did he actually have something? That's what I want to know. So I'm glad we hit our flush there. I'm just going to fold this. Yeah, he flopped two pair. It's low plated. Okay. Well, this guy, see? This guy just seems to... I don't know. This guy may just have it every time that he's raising or playing. I haven't seen him show down a weak hand yet. Right? So I'm just going to continue... We could have some flush draws here. Uh, I think this is a check call spot. If you, oh man, really you hit the five? Okay, that sucks. I'm gonna bet big on this flop. Try to take it down. Really? We will pick up some equity. The way we've been running, we're just gonna spike it straight, right? I don't know what is he just calling with here. It's kind of a weird board. I guess he's got a nine or an ace. I mean, he's not really floating. I haven't seen him float with a weak hand yet. So he's floated with some flush draws, but that wasn't possible. So I'm just going to say he has a nine or an ace most of the time there. This guy is hitting a lot of boards. I think he's just running really good situationally. He's just not getting paid because we're freaking just not payoff wizards. The way this guy's running, he's probably just having a bunch of monsters. And he's probably really annoyed that he can't seem to win, even though he's picking up a lot of hands and flopping well. I just get that feeling. I could be way off base here. I'm definitely defending the king force. Queen force suited. We don't flop anything, but I'll be back doors. I think we can just check full this. What's his C bet percentage? You see about five out of five now. Yeah, so I think he see bets a hundred percent. I'm gonna open up my range a little bit more now that we have a chip lead. Um, kind of gross.
reading 100% of boards. What? This guy's just had it every time, but he's been raising me so much. Am I folding the times he is bluffing and getting to show down the times he isn't? Is that just a coincidence? It's so weird that he could just raise so often. It just seems like he's raising a lot. Could he really be flopping that well? I don't know. We'll just keep playing our game here. Our fishy, passive, 5017 game. I'm going to raise because it's the first level of, of the um, 25-15. I think he's just going to fold a lot on this flop. He's just, he's just going to have to have something. Yeah, we're going to go aggressively after these higher blinds. Especially on the first hand. Is that the same exact hand with the same exact suits? <laughs> um, maybe we should bet bigger when we have bottom pair because he seems to be racing a lot every time. Every time! Maybe just figured it out. I don't know. So we need to mix it up, start raising, betting bigger. Hmm. I'm going to be disciplined here. I thought he would three bet a little tighter once the blinds got higher. That's why I'm raising that type of hand again. Um, just, so maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Welcome to the stream, those just joining. This guy's kind of tough to play against now. I don't know. Maybe we just need to stick to value hands. I don't know. I'm going to raise wide, though, because the blinds are up. Um, just going to check back. It's a good card. I'm going to min-raise this, uh, protect our hand. We can get called by worse. Um, he could have a six here, a spade, you know, that type of thing. Or he could just have a freaking jack. Is this guy going to flop a hand every every single hand? <laughs> it's kind of annoying. But I mean, we minimized our losses there, I think, you know, as well. I've been raising that turn, so I'm not really f I'm no too too frustrated by it. Would be nice to win a pot, though, eventually. Um, hopefully, he's three bets wide again. Damn. Is this the first hand he's folded all turn? I'm at it. <laughs> Seems like it. And I have ace king suited. It's so gross. I'm going to start shoving pretty wide. I'm going to bet bigger. We have a gut shot. See what he, how he reacts to a big bet. Maybe that's the secret. He's, he's, maybe he is just raising any time we bet small and folding every time we don't. Maybe if I 3 exit preflop. So we have the queen of clubs here. I think we have the best hand often. We're just going to check back and try to get the showdown here or hit, or hit a hand by the river. I don't think there's any chance he has. He can definitely call us with any club, though, so I'm going to bet. We kind of have the nuts here, right? When it, when it when it's played this way. Let's see what he called. I'm pretty sure he just called like the five of clubs, right? We'll check here though. He had the uh, wow. He just oh he had top pair. Okay. Well, I like our check back even better. Playing the board here a lot. I think I just try to get him off a of chop. Is he smart enough to realize this is a chop board a lot? Uh, actually, a six six. Oh, okay. Actually, he had anything higher than a six. He's winning, so I like I like my bet. Um, don't want to get blown off my hand by a three bet, but I think I just have to. Uh, it's kind of dumb, isn't it? I have to call a jack ten suited. I have to call a jack ten suited. Calling. Okay, we won another one. Um, he wants to play again. That's three straight for us. Let's go for four straight. Why not, right? Making me take my seat again. But at least we knew he had a pair when he three bet that time. So maybe, maybe he just has something. I don't know. Maybe it's like three betting a range of any ace, any pair, um, any strong king, maybe a lot of high suited cards. That would make sense for his wide range. 
So what do you say we just be complete nits this tournament? <laughs> Just kind of, we're not going to lead with our flow, our showdown value anymore. We're not going to lead with our showdown value. We're gonna we're gonna definitely check call with our showdown value though. What are we beating here? I mean, that's a really terrible card for him to bet. Is he ever gonna? I mean, I think I have to call that card. Either as a Oh, okay, trip fives, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, either he has the nuts or nothing, and that's kind of the nuts there, so. I actually like my call there. I think we're just going to see, like, crap <laughs> a lot of the time. He seems to be aggress he aggress aggressively goes after limp pots a lot more than most players do, I think. It's good for him. I mean, that's a good strategy. Not a suited hand. Better suited hand. I don't want to get check raised though, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna pot. Bet almost pot I, when I don't want to be check raised. I mean, I just think he he's going after small bets. So hopefully he doesn't pick off on pick up on what I'm doing. And when I want to get raised, I'll bet small. Um, right. I don't want to get raised here, so I'm gonna pot it. I just want to pick up my fold equity. Move on. Definitely gonna limp king high. Showdown value. I don't want to overdo it here. Hopefully I'll pick up a hand I can bet small with soon. Maybe I'll have to mix it up a little bit. Definitely defending the 7-5 suited. Yeah, this, this is a weak looking line to a lot of people. Um, it's going to be very confusing for him. Um, fortunately, he just didn't have anything. I mean, whatever, right? So we're going to, this is going to be our last one, no matter what happens. Um, I want to quit by five anyway, even though we started late. That'll give us a bit, just over an hour of play today, which is good. And then we'll have played four of these and some cash games as well. So I'm fine with that. We're just going to play knit tight here. I mean, he has a pretty good feeling of how we play, so he's not like we're going to lose. We're going to make him adjust to us or anything. Um, I think 3x. Go to a 3x strategy. He's, like we said, he's attacking weak looking bets, maybe. So when we don't want to get raised, we'll bet bigger. Pretty straightforward adjustment. It, Hopefully it takes him so long to pick up on it if he picks up on it at all. Um, well, we don't necessarily want to get it in with Ace-9 offsuit here. And we're just going to check this back. And maybe just protect our hand on the turn by betting a little bit big. Yeah, he just mostly just has something here when this plays this way. And he block bets the river with his 8 or his jack. Alright. This guy just always makes a pair, it looks like. I have a gut. Ah, didn't want to do the weak lead. Remember, he attacks those? Um, I think he could have a deuce X hand or 7 8 or something like that. Um, so we make a straight. Um, I guess we just kind of bet small here to try and induce something and get value from like an 8 or something. If he raises, we're just calling. Um, we don't want to get coolered here, right? Yeah, he mostly just has a seven when he raises. We definitely want to get three bet here, so we're gonna bet small. Hardly ever has an ace here, so I think we just have to raise. It's better to raise now and find out 
rather than call, 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 and just have him show us ace three. So I think he led with like a six or five there. We, we know he does that. So let's just make the hand play easier and just raise rather than just trying to call him down and give him a chance to improve and feel more confident in his hand and just put us in a tough spot. There's no, I mean, he could even call with the worst hand there. Right, so. We're going to three exit because that's what we're going to do and we don't want to get blown off our hand. We'll make it be a lot more confident in our fold. Um, once we get three bet, once we three exit. Definitely playing the queen jack. You see bet's like 100%. So I think we can go for a check raise on a board like this. Should work like almost always here, but like I said, this guy just has it every freaking time. Uh, it's uncanny. It's uncanny. Just has it every time. Every time we've raised, he's just had it. Well, not every time, right? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to try and be uh, superstitious about it. But hopefully, we look like we're on tilt here. Uh, I'm just going to open ship out of position. Hopefully, he just limped like Ace Five. He hasn't really been doing that though. I haven't really seen him trap or I just don't I just have a pretty good idea he's just not trappy. I think he just might play pretty straightforward. Except for his occasional light three bet sometimes. Um I think we can lead a hand with back doors like this. Definitely gonna bet the turn now. And probably check call this river often. I don't think he's gonna bet a jack. He hasn't really been bluffing that much, though, has he? But I'm going to snap him off with this. Ah. Yeah, it's annoying. It's really annoying. He hasn't been bluffing that much. I probably could just check fold that. Um, I'm trying to see if he can get it in with a weak hand here. Um. I'm not going to put it in, but I just think I just have to bet. Uh, bet. Thanks for the, or uh, welcome those just joining us. We'll get it in with the king queen here. I wish he would open, <laughs> raise, <laughs> instead of just winning his limp every time. We're just going to try and grind our way back up here a little bit. So when we double up, maybe we'll have a chance of being even or ahead again. Um, but I think blinds are still short enough here that we can get back in this with no problem. Um, Got to hope to not get cooler. I'm going to keep shoving. Now, he may eventually trap us, but whatever. I think he's playing straightforward now just because we're short. So just looking for a hand to get it in with against us. He's kind of head hunting. So we'll let him do that. He's going to check fold this. Give up a few small pots here and there. Hmm. Kind of want to win this one. Be four for four versus this guy. Hopefully he tries to trap us with ace ten here. I just don't think he has it any. I think if he just looks down at ace ten, he's just going to raise. A min race. I mean, we have a nine. It's hard for him to have an ace. I think we just check back, try to get some value from some weaker hands. Um, I'm going to bet the turn to protect and maybe get value from something. Okay. It's a good pot to win. <laughs> We're creeping our way back up. Sure, slowly but surely. Now we're about one minute from the next blind level. So we'll have about 10 big blinds once the level goes up. And we're back to shove fold mode just about. Oh wow, I just think it just went up on me. I hate it when the blinds go up on me <laughs> when I'm short. Oh, yeah. Seems like we got queen deuce every hand. It's like the hand of the day.
Eh, whatever. This hand flops well. Eh, screw you. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. We're just going to have to get lucky here now. We're just going to have to get lucky because they'll put us in light. We just got to hope to pick up a better hand and, and hold or want to flip or something like that. It's a good time to pick up Queen Tenzuda and it plays really well. I think he calls us like with a huge range here. Um, eh, so he's actually slightly ahead. That sucks. We're screwed. So that's our last one. We won two out of three, what, three out of four. So we're going to decline that one and just, I got to quit anyway. It's almost five o'clock. It would have been nice to win that one, but three out of four ain't bad. Wow. So we're at 550. Um, so we're, I mean, that's not like a huge winning day, but could have been better. We could have been at 560 if we won that one, but we'll take it. So we're at 550, and um, that's up about 31 for the day. So we've had a couple straight winning sessions, decent sessions. So we'll take that. Um, oh, games look decent right now. Well, maybe not so great. Better than earlier. So we'll just be glad. I mean, we had, I kind of wasn't able to play my A game today. I'm just, I don't know what my problem is. Maybe a little distracted. I don't know. Um, been up getting up early the last couple days. I got a lot on my mind, too. As I mentioned to most of you, um, probably already know, I'm getting this uh, material finalized for the coaching school that I'm starting officially on the February 1st. And... We have several signups so far. I'm going to have to eventually cut it off on signing up signups just because I want to kind of keep the initial group small so I can give everybody the attention they deserve. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you go to automaticpoker.com, my website, and check out the training section, you'll find the coaching school. And I have most of that stuff on there is pretty much finalized. So if you decide you want to do it, um, you know, just the instructions are right on there. I think I've decided to finally, I think what I've decided finally is to just go with, so what I used to do, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be all over the place with this, but initially I was going to go with like a basic strategy, intermediate strategy, and then have three separate groups and advanced strategy, kind of what I do in my book. And I think that works really well for self-teaching, but I don't think it works so well for like group coaching. So what I'm kind of just doing is, is making it all one strategy. And the strategy I've made kind of, the way I've made it is kind of it's all three in one. So you can start out very basic by using the chart a certain way or the system a certain way. And then it kind of just lets you build into the system. And we'll do a lot of hands-on training showing you how to use it. And it's not really a chart-based system, but what the charts do is give you a vacuum range. And some adjustments built in as well based on HUD reads, but you still, but what we're still going to do is do a lot of game flow work. You know, like when you watch me play, obviously I'm making decisions based exactly on what's happened the last few hands, based on my current read on this guy, based on where he's seated at the table. That's kind of the stuff that the coaching program really excels at helping people with, is why you should be sizing this, why you should be taking these particular lines. But first of all, what you're going to get is a strong, basic vacuum strategy. That's what we want to get you, have you get down first. And once you have that down, well, actually, as you're getting that down, we're going to add in other stuff as well. It's going to be exciting. Um, I think this could be a good thing for a lot of people out there. Um, the f uh, smallest program we have is a small stakes program. We thought about doing a micro program, but I realized that, it's, just to be honest with you, I would love to do it. I just don't have the time to put hours and hours into something and get like, make like ten dollars a month off of it you know and that's a possibility when pe when each student's going to be starting some of them starting at the micros making like 20 bucks 30 bucks 40 bucks a month and i'm getting just a percentage of that it's just not worth my time i'd basically be working i'd be better off working at mcdonald's honestly so we start people at small stakes i'm still not going to make that much money at it but at least it might be eight dollars an hour for me or something you know ten dollars at least it's worth my time and even though I'm not going to be making all that much money, I'm not greedy. It's very rewarding to see you guys build up and get better. And eventually you'll be at higher stakes and maybe you'll get coaching from me then and I'll make more money then off of you, you know. So I think if I invest the time, make everybody better, I'll be rewarded in the end eventually. That's kind of the way I see it. But 
if you want to check that out, go to automatpoker.com, check out the training section. I'll actually drop the link in here. Most of you already know what I'm talking about if you've been watching the stream. But if you don't, it's something you might want to check out. You start with basically as little as $200 in your bankroll. Well, actually, $200 is what I prefer you start at. You start at 25L and we'll build from there. And if you want a customized program, we can do that as well. Or you could just pick the program you want. Probably 99% of people will just go with the small stakes. You really need to have some experience. And I have to basically invite you into the mid stakes program because it's starting at 200 and L. So if you haven't already beat 100 and L really soundly, you wouldn't want to do the mid stakes program yet. Um, just do the small stakes, take you a couple, three months maybe, build up, to, and then we'll take your shot at mid stakes after we work with you for a while. But you could do exactly what I'm doing on here, except maybe you could do better. I mean, if you could put more than an hour, an hour and a half in a day, you know, who knows where I would be playing five, 10 hours a day. So if you've got the time to put into it, maybe we can get you to high stakes by the end of this year or something, or just depends on how willing, how, um, hard you're willing to work, you know. So thanks for everybody for watching. I'm going to take off. It's been a fun session. Uh, the bankroll's back moving in the positive direction. That's good. So we will see you tomorrow. And everybody take care.